¿Con esto se puede pasar? ¿Se puede? Sí. Hacho la palabra a Pau Fernández Garrido, de World Fish Migration Foundation. Gracias. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I hope I am doing it on purpose. I hope nobody takes a micro siesta during my talk or watch the cell phone because I really need your attention, I really need your support, and you will understand why at the end of my presentation. So today here, I am going to try to show you a brief um, summary of the status of the river uh, fragmentation in Europe. And, um, Sono and, tutti svegli per adesso, credo. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and what are some, what countries are doing uh, dam removals and why? But before I start about talking down about dam removal, um, I would like to briefly, very quickly introduce you uh, our foundation, World Fish Migration Foundation, and what we work. So we work in several projects. The main projects we work in are World Fish Migration Day. World Fish Migration Day is a worldwide event that where we celebrate every two years. We started very recently, only uh, four, uh, five years ago, and four years ago, sorry. And what we do there, what we are trying to do is to connect and get together all the people all the people that in one way or, not, or another work on river restoration, uh, delta, and lakes. In a way or another, uh, um, environmental administrations, universities, research centers, schools, uh, um, angling associations, kayak associations, uh, indirectly or directly working on, on rivers. Why? Because only one organization, only one NGO, cannot have, it doesn't have a, a big impact in politicians, in the media, in the citizens, but if we all get together, then it's not only one weirdo, one weird person or two, you know, like all of these people, no. We are thousands, we are really thousands, thousands of organizations working on rivers. So uh, our goal is to get all of you together in one day, and then politicians and uh, media really get us seriously. And we are, in the last World Fish Migration Day, we were over 3,000 organizations uh, um, celebrating World Fish Migration Day. And how, how do they participate? It's really easy. Um, you can organi organize a big event or a tiny event. It doesn't matter. The important thing is to reach uh, your, your neighbors, your citizen. You can uh, organize uh, an open, we say in Spanish, uh, jornada de puertas abiertas, open door in your uh, research institute, open day, thank you. Or you can organize a kayak competition, uh, a theater place, uh, fishing days, uh, conference talks, uh, uh, there has been even uh, radio uh, programs, any, any kind of thing you, you, you can think of, but to share your knowledge with, uh, with the population. That's one of the projects. Another project we are working on, it's, it's AMBER, Adaptive Management of Barriers in European Rivers. It's a Horizon 2020 project. We are working uh, with another 20 partners from 11 countries. And... Um, it's for the press. Oh, it's for the press. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And... Uh, the, f the five main work packages of this um, uh, um, project, sorry, are, uh, as you can see there, it's making an atlas uh, of all the barriers in European rivers. When I say Europe, I'm talking about continental Europe, 33 countries, okay, not only uh, uh, um, European Union. Also, uh, studying the impact of barriers, the, uh, creating a decision of priori prioritization tools, uh, we are studying uh, six cases studies, and the work package five is communication. I would like to very briefly tell you about work package one and five. So we are in the process now of collecting all barriers, inventories that exist in Europe, 
This is being very complicated. It has been two years and some countries like France, I will show you now, or, or Sweden, they have an amazing database, open access, where they have all their barriers listed. But there are other countries, they, they, they haven't even started to, uh, to make their inventory, so they don't know how many barriers they are. But I'll tell you that our estimation in the project uh, for now is that even though we won't show all the records in the atlas, it will be free access. You will be able to see the atlas and access to it uh, next year. Uh, we, I mean, there will be just a little tiny part of, of what is really out there in the rivers. We estimate there is o over a million barriers in European rivers in this moment. And this is a very important figure because until two years ago, I kept searching for a number of barriers in European rivers, and you always had the same number. 7,000 big dams in Europe, in Spain, uh, 1,200 uh, big dams in Spain. That's, that's the tip of the iceberg. That's nothing of what is out there. And this is really important to show to population and politicians so they understand the dimension of the problem. And the uh, work package five, it's something that I would ask you to actually right now download the application. This is a free uh, mobile application we created. It's super easy to, um, to use. I won't play the video because I, I don't have time, but you can see the video on the internet, it's just two minutes video, where you download the application and then when you are out there in the river, fishing, uh, walking, uh, uh, kayaking or whatever, you just take a picture of the barrier you see in the river you send it to us, you answer five questions. It's in Italian, the, the application too. It's in um, 10 different languages and we are working on more translations in, in this moment. So you just answer five questions like, what type of barrier it is? Uh, what is the height more or less from one to two, two to three meters? Does it has a fish weight? Does it not? Is it still in use the barrier? It's not, and then you send it to us. This application is already being used and you can actually open the map on, online, and you can already see people uploading the barriers in Lithuania, in France, in Spain, in Portugal. It's really cool. And we, our goal is to uh, first reach the population and create awareness of the problem. So this is a citizen science uh, uh, program. And second, to get help and collaboration from citizens and locate barriers that we don't know where they are. So please use it. And uh, if you want more information, you want to get uh, the newsletters from Amber or the scientific papers, we are producing everything, please contact us. We can send you all this information. We send it like once a month, once every two months. And the last thing before I start with dam removal is that we have a free book that you can download for free in from c2source.com. And you can see um, a general overview of what's happening in the world right now in river restoration, in dam removal. There are 37 cases, studies, real, that it's, they are explained. You can see more or less uh, migratory fish species, uh, the most iconic ones, and uh, many more things. So I really recommend you to, to uh, read the book. And if anybody uh, is, wants to volunteer to translate it in Italian, we are open for that too. And now, why dam removal euro? That's why I came here today. Six years ago, uh, 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 I was in Massachusetts in 2012, uh, learning and training on dam removal, how they do dam removals there in the East Coast. And uh, I, I was in shock of how much information there is in the United States about dam removal. Uh, and all the, the inventories they have, all the information and study collected. And I was like, what's happening in Europe? I, I know nothing. And then I met Herman Vanningen, the founder of the World Fish Migration Foundation. I met there, there and he said, it's, it's the same with me. We know nothing about what's going on in Europe. So we came back and we decided to start dam removal Europe. Um, and we start investigating what's going on. And we were amazed. We are amazed because USA, as many of you will know, they have demolished uh, 1,400 uh, barriers until now. But we found out that Europe has demolished over 4,000 already, and nobody knows. And we were like, what the hell? I mean, 
there's so much being done, so much great case studies, and nobody, we are not sharing this information, this experience, and actually we are not showing it to the uh, public, like, hey, this is great, and this is why, you know? So uh, each time a practitioner, and I'll show you cases in Spain, in Sweden, each time a practitioner, an engineer, an administration wants to do a dam removal in Europe, same thing in, in USA, but in, in Europe even more, they have the same problems. It's like the very first, each time they, they carry out, they execute a dam removal, it's like the very first dam being removed ever. It's like a taboo, you know, to remove a dam. And uh, sometimes the social problems and opposition uh, are more difficult than the engineering part of removing a dam. So we said this, this must change, you know, people must understand that this is necessary, that a dam is not forever, it's not a waterfall, a dam is not a waterfall in its maintenance, it, uh, it has safety issues, and then when you abandon a barrier, well, something must be done. So, um, and not only that, we wanted to, to, to connect experts and to share experience, because sometimes some people face the situation that it's the first time they do it, or the second, and they think there's the first time. And there's so much other examples out there that can help you. So our main objectives on dam removal Europe is increase awareness and, and make people understand that dam removal is the best option when restoring a river when it's technically possible. It's not always technically possible. Uh, overall in Europe, if you go to the United States, it's another story, but here, uh, we are talking about, we have uh, uh, weirs and dams from 500 years ago, 800 years ago, in a very uh, urbanized area. So not always is possible, but when it's possible, it's the, best, uh, the best option. Second, we are creating a solid network of uh, um, practitioners, experts. Why? Because first, to support each other with all the information and knowledge we are gaining. And second, because when the media uh, wants to uh, uh, talk about dam removal in the newspaper, in the TV, blah, blah, blah. They have no idea where to go. And they ended up, they end up going to some uh, little or big ecologist uh, organization, blah, 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 that they are not specialized because they don't know where to go. This is another thing that we started actually to, to get um, results on it. Now the media is contacting us. When there is a dam removal, when there is a dam, a collapse, they know where they have to go. And we, sometimes we answer the questions, sometimes we redirect them to the expert of whatever, France, UK, US, USA. So we are creating a community, an expert community, and a, and a reference on, on this field. And third, we want to put down removal in Brussels agenda. We already started doing this because uh, we want to put dam removal as an option, as the best option when possible. And, 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 and if we put this in Brussels, we know it will support and help many other people working in their countries. How the hell are we going to do this? Well, uh, we started only two years ago, and uh, well, we started collecting the inventories of dams being removed in Europe. I will show you later what we got for now. Uh, actually here. Uh, Sweden, uh, the, the leading country in uh, dam removal is France. They have an amazing inventory of existing dams and demolished dams. Uh, their, their number is uh, two th approximately 2,400, but that's not completely real because uh, they also um, take into account um, collapsed dams, so naturally removed. So. So per essere sicuri di capirci, quando parla di dam, parla di sbarramenti in generale, non solo yes. di dighe. Sono Sorry. ascoltato la traduzione, ma giusto per, per essere certi che ci capiamo, quindi anche briglie o sbarramenti di attraverse, sbarramenti e anche grandi dighe. Thank you. Yeah, when we say dam in English, uh, we, we include also weirs, but you know, we don't say dam and weirs every time. That's, that's a mistake, sorry. Yeah, it's any type of barrier, little ones, like half a meter to up to many meters, okay? So France is the leading country there. They, they are doing an amazing job, really, and uh, I really congratulate them always because it's great. Uh, Sweden is the second one, and uh, they, in their inventories, you can see they have a 1,600, but, uh, I put a, a 1,000 because uh, we are in this moment investigating 
that they have, instead of removal, fish waste in the inventory. So I think the, the record is lower. Finland has removed more than 450, actually. They tell me around 900. But I will tell you later, when I talk about their policy and situation, why. It's half the number. And um, Spain, around two, uh, 250 uh, barriers. And we are now finding that Denmark has removed dams. We are in the process of, to find out how many because we have to, to contact 91 municipalities to find out. They don't have a national inventory as friends. Germany in a, in an area, in a, in a region, they have demolished more than 10. So we are finding in this moment more and more information and more, uh, projects being done. It's, it's really amazing. So we did this atlas that you can actually see already in our website and we are constantly working on it. And we also organize international workshops every year. We did the first one in Spain in 2016. And uh, the last one was in uh, Sweden uh, last month. And the next one, we haven't published this yet, but uh, I can tell you it will be in May in France and it will be uh, very near to the biggest dam removal being done in Europe in this moment in the Selun River. Uh, dam being removed that is uh, 35 meters tall and they are actually uh, they have the water, all the re reservoir, and they will start, uh, sorry, demolishing the dam in uh, around April. So we will do this seminar uh, there and we will be sitting the field trip, this dam, dam removal. So there in the seminar, we try to connect people and to share experience. And everything we collect, we put it on the website. So in the website, you can find all the presentations from past um, seminars, everything from 2016, 2017, and also from national seminars. I didn't say that we also do national seminars. So we did, we had a, a national seminar in Lithuania, just for Lithuania. And we also had this for, uh, for Sweden, uh, so, uh, and for Spain. So, and then you'll, you can also find cases studies there, explain briefly, uh, real cases study of dam removals. You can also find um, scientific papers, books, magazines, all uh, links related with dam removal. And news, we send a newsletter every two months about things going on in Europe, uh, dams being removed, why, who pays for it, uh, what people think, if, what type of a social program or project uh, planification they did. So you can really contact us and if you want to receive this information, we can, uh, we can include you. We will be very happy to include you. And uh, we want to do a dam removal guidance for Europe. Uh, hopefully, we can start working on that this fall and we will publish it in 2020, hopefully. Um, what we want is to have a free uh, access, free downloadable uh, guide where we want to explain real cases, step by step, how you do a dam removal, uh, uh, lessons learned, mistakes done, so you try to avoid, you know, um, uh, engineering mistakes is it's, it's difficult to find, but sometimes it happens. And, uh, and we want this uh, to, have, to be available for free. So hopefully we can, we can have it ready in, in a year and a half too. And we started a crowdfunding campaign this summer. So uh, we, we receive good cases, uh, good, sorry, candidates for removing dams from countries, from uh, Romania, Spain, uh, UK. In this moment, we have two in UK and one in Ukraine, I think it is. And we collect money to help fund these uh, dam removals because not in all countries you have uh, uh, helps, grants to help uh, remove your dam. And I will explain this in a minute. I would like to start actually with, with friends. I don't know if the map will show. Six minutes? Oh my God. Okay. So France is the best, is the best case. They have an amazing inventory with 95,000 obstacles, out of which 70,000 are weirs and dams. It's just uh, incredible. And uh, the work they have been uh, doing is amazing. They have a really complex um, organization, but it works really well. Um, I would like to say that when I ask this question about how do you manage rivers, who manages rivers, they always answer me the same. Everybody, I was like, everybody, until I understood 
<laughs> hey, uh, there is an NGO partner from Dan Removal Europe that made this scheme for me because I just didn't understand anything. And I was like, wow, it's really everybody who managed rivers in, in France, but it works really well. And basically what you have to know is that they have 103 departments, which they are called departmental direction of territory, right? Departmental. And um, that's th th those are who manage the, uh, the river, really. And, uh, and then you have water agencies for, um, for regional level, and then you have the national level, which you have the Ministry of Environment and the FB, FAFB, the uh, French Agency of Biodiversity, which is national level. So when you want to remove a dam, you must get in contact with the local authority, DDT, the Departmental Direction of Territory, DDT. And why are they removing dams in France? First, because of safety. If you don't maintain a dam, uh, sooner or later it's going to collapse. They don't last forever. Second, because of water quality, and then third, for that's, that's what I've been told with all my interviews. And second, for ecological continuity. Do they have legislation which support this? Yes. The water law from 2017 and the water framework directive. And uh, for the authorization, they ask for DDT. And who pays for the removal? Well, owners should pay for the removal, but they have many grants. They have many uh, funds which support uh, these removals. They, they can even pay up to 80% sometimes of the removal. So it's, it's a really big help. And um, usually we are talking about they are removing at small barriers. So usually uh, they cost between 2,000 and a few thousand euros, but they are, as I said before, they are uh, removing this moment, the biggest uh, dam in Europe. It's gonna cost 30 million euros. There are two dams actually. This is the biggest in the Saloon River, Vecin, I don't know how to pronounce it, Vecin Dam, 35 uh, meters high. And upstream, right upstream this dam, is another dam, La Rouge, La Roche, uh, that is 16 meters. They are uh, demolishing these two dams between, two, they start in 2019 until 2021. And uh, we were there, uh, all the team from the foundation last month visiting, it's, it's just amazing the works they are doing and it's really interesting. We will explain all the case next year in May during the seminar. And, uh, but they have removed much more, as I said before. Uh, they started more actively in the 90s. This is, uh, and, and not only with uh, new dams, historical, this is a great example, historical dams. In Spain, we always say, oh, how are you going to remove this? It's historical. It's like, well, we have uh, 20,000 historical things. You know, if we don't, I mean, it's fine that we uh, keep some, you know, but it's like we are talking about thousands, so sometimes it's, it's necessary, and actually, this is an amazing example because they removed this dam from the 1800s to recover salmon. This was not even for safety. I, I really admire these people because they did a really good job. This is from uh, pictures from uh, the demolition in 1996. I'm gonna ask you for more, no. no. Spanish people talk a lot, sorry, no. <laughs> and then Sweden, okay, I switched to Sweden very quickly. Sweden has a really good database too. Uh, they have over uh, 10,000 obstacles in Sweden, but they update their database like every month or every two months, so they keep finding uh, barriers. Still, it's not completely, uh, if, um, it's not complete, the, the inventory. And who manages the rivers in Sweden? Well, most of the rivers are private. I forgot to say this in France. Most of the river, are, most of the rivers are private except the big rivers. Those are public. But in Sweden, all rivers are private. So it's the river owner who manages the rivers. But if they want to do any project, any activity which will impact the private or common interest, then they have to ask for permission to the environmental court. And the environmental court will say, okay, you can remove the dam, you cannot. And if it's not a very complicated project, then the uh, regional um, boards, which are called the Swedish County Administrative Boards, they will follow the, the project. So what, which are the drivers? Environmental restoration. They basically do it to recover longitudinal continuity 
and, um, and to restore their salmon stocks and their fish stocks. Um, who pays for the removal in Sweden? Usually the owner. Usually it's the owner, but they have some funds. Not as, may, as, not as much as France, but they have some funds. And right now, this year, they created um, a budget uh, that from money from uh, hydroelectric, hydroelectric, hydropower uh, companies. So the hydroelectrical companies have uh, created a budget so to restore rivers. But uh, Swedish people still complain because they say it's not enough money and it will run out in five years or whatever. But it's, it's a start. I think it's a start. Uh, this, you can find uh, all the removals in our uh, map, in our website too. And last example? Okay, Finland. No, Finland. Sorry, Finland. Sorry, Finland. It was very interesting. But so, UK, super interesting. UK is the most difficult place, I think, to remove a dam. Uh, because they love their dams and weirs, you know. Uh, when you talk about uh, removing a weir there, it's like, no, my grandpa used to bathe here. No, my great-great-grandpa, no, my, uh, uh, the, the, our whatever word is 200 years ago uh, happened here in this bridge, whatever. So it's really complicated, but they are managing. They are managing, and I would like to point out that it's Scotland, it's the only place where you can find a fund annual fund, they, they have this money every year, around 2 million euros, to restore rivers, uh, the, the Sco uh, Scottish Scotland Environmental Protection Agency. It's, it's really great, and uh, with this money, they restore rivers, and they demolish dams, and they construct fish waste. And Spain, okay, Spain, please, <laughs> Spain. Spain, uh, what I would like to say that the obstacles in Spain after one year collecting a database, um, we came up with the 21,000, uh, but I estimate this number is so low. I estimate there is around 50,000 barriers in Spain. That number is, is, is not reality. And who owns the rivers in Spain? Uh, they are public, all of them are public. Who manages the rivers in Spain? There is an authority per river basin which facilitates a lot of things. I have heard here, you have many organizations for the same river, so it must be uh, very complicated. So there you have one unit for one river basin. Why are they removing dams for a water framework directive? But when you ask this to the authorities, uh, they say, oh, but we, well, we, before the water framework directive, we have a wonderful law. And it's like, yes, we have a wonderful law. I don't have the time to tell you, but we have a really wonderful law. And guess what? Nobody has followed the law. So it's like, whatever, you know, we have a wonderful law. But you know that our law says since 1889 that we must build fishways in our uh, weirs. And it was mandatory in all rivers uh, since the law of uh, 1942. It's mission impossible to find a fish way. And then weirs, uh, it's mandatory that once the owner of a dam has finished the use of a dam, it has to leave the river exactly the same as it was. So it has to pay for the removal of the dam. Nobody has done this. So it's funny when the, the authority says, yes, but we have a wonderful life. Yes, but you have not followed the law at all. Uh, and we have demolished for now 200, uh, 50 dams. I would like to say that not all the dams, these two dams are a great case studies, but most of the dams are little. Look this little dam, two meters high. We were all there in the field trip during the first seminar, the Dam Removal Europe seminar. Most of the, of the dams we are demolishing are like that. And uh, usually is the authority who pays for the demolition, although, although in our law it says that it should be the owner. And uh, we are demolishing more and more. And this, the last one, I finish. This is uh, because this dam is of 46 meters high, 43 meters high in Navarra. Uh, it's owned by, by San Sebastian City Hall, which is in the Basque country, but the dam is in Navarra. And uh, they decided that they want to demolish, but it has no meaning. They, they, it's not being used, and they have safety problems. But it's so expensive to remove a dam in the middle of a natural park. The natural park is one of the best. Is, um, of Spain, is so expensive that they, they said, okay, we dig a hole, we drill a hole, and they are going to drill a hole so they, because it's cheaper. So there are many 
uh, options, solutions, you know, when removing a dam. It's not always uh, removing everything. And uh, please join us, join us, and join us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pao, for your enthusiastic speech. Sorry to cut you, but I wanted to allow some time for questions. You will speak again, but just answering questions. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Eh, se qualcuno ha qualche domanda per Pao, nel frattempo ricordo che noi qualche tempo fa abbiamo organizzato una serie di training on, online eh, in collaborazione con Wetlands International proprio sulla rimozione di sbarramenti. Trovate anche una lezione, diciamo una introduzione di Pao ben più lunga rispetto a quella che ha fatto oggi e anche altri esperti che affrontano tematiche più, più tecniche e amministrative sul processo di rimozione di, di sbarramenti. Qualche, qualche domanda? Aaron vuole sì. rimuovere alcuni sbarramenti. No, qui. <ride> Veramente sono... La mia visione è un po' diversa. No, io chiedevo una cosa e ha parlato di... Nella slide dove si vedeva la diga con la figura della ragazza disegnata che la voleva smantellare. Allora, all'epoca probabilmente è stata fatta quest'opera. Mi senti? Sorry. Riparto? No, no. Quindi slide è dove c'era la ragazza che voleva smantellare il disegno alla diga. Allora, all'epoca penso che sia stata fatta quest'opera, il governo spagnolo l'abbia fatta su una motivazione. Okay? Non penso che si sia svegliato al mattino spendendo dei soldi per fare una diga che così per farsi bello. Allora, andiamo a smantellare la diga. Sono d'accordo se vengono a mancare le motivazioni del perché è stata costruita, ma se le motivazioni ad oggi rimangono, mi deve dire anche l'alternativa, perché se, ripeto, le motivazioni c'erano e rimangono oggi, smantelliamo la diga. Quindi cosa succede? Non mi ha detto quelle che sono le alternative per chi usufruiva dell'acqua. Compreso? I think you, you, you skipped part of the translation probably. So the, the first part of the question was about that picture that we are using now. The, the, this is from the Balkans. Quella, quella figura lì, quella, quella foto è legata alla campagna, alla campagna dei Balcani che, che è in corso ed è una, una diga che ha problemi strutturali come molte di queste di cui sta parlando Paolo. The question is, so in case uh, the reasons for building the dam is still there, Is what? It's still there. Ah, still there. Um. Still applies. Then what's the alternative to the use or the, to yeah. these reasons? I love this question. Um, because we mix, we mix ideas. Our goal in this moment is to remove useless dams. We have so many useless dams, thousands, that first we will need a couple of centuries to resolve that problem. Useless, they, they have no use. That's the problem, they're, they are garbage, okay? So that's the first thing. Then in, two, in 200 years, in 100 years when we uh, um, resolve that problem, then we can, we can say, okay, we want to remove this dam that is being used, what's the alternative? I'll tell you that Uh, for those dams that we would really like to uh, remove and they're being used, there is not an option. We won't remove dams that are being used, okay? That, that, I mean, we need, we need the water. But what we also claim is responsibility. What we have been doing until now is, oh, I need a dam, we put it here. 20 years later, oh, I need another dam, I put it here. No. What we are trying to say is like, okay, we need a dam maybe now. Okay, where? Where is the place where it will impact less? It's not the same putting a dam in one location of the river on a tributary or what? So first, responsibility and knowledge. You know, not putting a dam whatever you want. And that I know sometimes is difficult because incredibly, the last word when uh, making, uh, when the last, uh, making a, a decision, it's a politician. And a politician has no background in science, and it changes every four years. So it's, it's sometimes it's very complicated. 
And for me, it's something that I will never understand. Like when you go to the doctor and you are going to be operated by the heart, it, the, the, the method of the operation changes every four years because of the government, you know, it's like, no, because it, it, it follows uh, medical law uh, rules, right? Same with science. So it's very frustrating and it's something that we must claim. Like, excuse me, all of us scientists, practitioners, engineers, please listen to us because you have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, and I think we need to be very serious about that. And to finish your question, uh, in the future, I think we will need dams for, for water. We are so many for, for uh, uh, drinking water, irrigation. But in certain places, I think it's, it's very important to, when there is an option to, uh, to store the water outside of the river. I mean, the river are the veins of our ecosystem. So we are putting all these blocks in our veins. And then a hundred years later, you get the, res the results, you know? So, um, but that will come later. Now we have the first problem, which is huge, and we will take centuries. Posso permettermi di aggiungere un brevissimo commento? Chiaro che la maggior parte dei paesi in cui si stanno rimuovendo dighe e sbarramenti si parte da questi, no? da quelli palesemente inutili o da quelli che creano rischio. Allora, in Italia ancora credo, non so se qualcuno magari è più aggiornato di me, ma qualche prima stima ufficiosa, parlando solo di dighe, parla di. 200-250 che a breve potrebbero creare seri problemi di rischio, quindi che strutturalmente hanno dei problemi. E non è detto che per tutte queste economicamente sia sostenibile la ricostruzione. Poi ci sono anche, quindi queste sono quelle da cui partire. Per quanto riguarda gli sbarramenti più piccoli, ad esempio l'abbassamento la, di una briglia o la trasformazione di una briglia in una rampa è un intervento di costi molto limitati che può avere un'efficacia notevole dal punto di vista del trasporto solido, dal punto di vista de della fauna. E anche da noi ci sono un sacco di valli con briglie costruite in anni in cui, diciamo, con l'analisi costi-benefici non andava, andava ancora meno di moda di adesso. Quindi c'è moltissimo spazio prima di toccare quelle che sono più conflittuali. Poi però ci sono all'interno di questi lunghi elenchi alcuni casi, tra cui questo questo, questo qui che ha fatto vedere, in cui questa diga avrebbe potuto essere mantenuta a fine concessione, non aveva problemi strutturali, ma si è deciso che il beneficio ecologico, in questo caso per il ripristino della continuità per il salmone, era più importante del beneficio in termini di produzione idroelettrica. Quindi è stato fatto anche qui un lungo percorso e si è deciso di non rinnovare la concessione. Però chiaramente partiamo almeno da, da quelle facili, no? Altre domande? Cristian Farioli, in terz'ultima fila. Approfitto perché... Si sente? Sì. Ne hai parlato. Non picchiare che sennò esplodono le orecchie agli interpreti. Scusate. Eh... <ride> Hai parlato quindi di eh, trasformazione dei, delle briglie in, eh, in rampe. Noi abbiamo visto almeno un intervento di questo tipo qua in Emilia sul Modolena, che è un torrente di piccole dimensioni. Allora, eh, vorrei chiedere, cioè vorrei chiedere, vorrei segnalare ecco, che in alcuni contesti, come eh, nei piccoli torrenti, quali il Modolena, eh, questo tipo di, eh, di intervento che comunque viene ritenuto in linea, cioè coerente anche alle linee guida della regione, può, eh, potrebbe generare più problemi che risolverne, perché eh, in questo caso la buca eh, a valle della Briglia è eh, l'unico contesto in cui per qualche chilometro ristagna un po' di acqua in estate, sopravvive l'itiofauna, la comunità acquatica, quando torna l'acqua ricolonizza a monte e a valle per quanto possa riuscire. Quindi trasformare questa buca dove ristagna acqua in una rampa, in massi ciclopici eh, e poi eh, diciamo, considerarlo anche un intervento di riqualificazione fluviale, io credo che sia diciamo, un passaggio sul quale bisogna fare una riflessione perché altrimenti si rischiano delle distorsioni. Ecco. Visto che se ne è parlato, eh, colgo l'occasione per segnalarlo. Sì, no, grazie Cristian perché è sicuramente un'osservazione molto importante. Cioè, in generale 
attribuire una certa tipologia di intervento a priori a certi benefici dati per scontati non, non, non funziona, quindi questo è importante. And for you, Paolo, did you understand the, the, the question? So the fact yes, it was about a, a cost, rear that put a ramp and then it caused more problems because of the cattle, uh, the Because the drinking. pool was the last, let's say, remaining habitat for uh, yeah. drought season, so cost and benefits also in, in ecological terms. As I said in the very beginning, in Europe, it won't be possible to remove all dams. Even if we had all the money to do it, technically, it's not possible. Look, that case. There are many cases. So it won't be possible. And, and the, the fish ramp, well, I don't know that case. Each case, I'm a fishway engineer, and definitely it's a delicate issue. Each case is a different case. Maybe in that case, there should have been a naturalized channel, a bypass. I don't know that case. But I understand your position. That's why I think we must start with the useless dams that they don't have any benefit, okay? And we are talking about thousands. And then after that, we will talk and we'll see other cases more complicated. I mean, we are talking about, really, we have over a million barriers in Europe. We are talking about thousands. In Spain, I, I really think there are over 10, 10 to 15,000 barriers with no use. We won't even finish in, in two centuries. So I think people get really freaked out. Oh, we need water. It's like, yeah, but I'm not saying we are going to demolish all dams. I'm, I'm, I'm saying to be responsible and not leave things in the river that are not being used and they have safety problems.